Well, today the Black Lives Matter uh, movement stands up and it speaks out for social justice. And it also has been calling for an end to racial inequities. But there has been a rebuttal to the slogan or the phrase or the movement Black Lives Matter that we hear all too frequently. All lives matter. So what does that mean, right? CBS caught up with prominent members of the black community to explain why the popular rebuttal is not as harmless or inclusive as it seems. Take a listen. The worst kind of silence to me actually uh, are people who are posting all lives matter. For me, that is a very special kind of silence. It's a very painful kind of silence because it removes our voice. It doesn't allow us to express our very specific pain, and it's worse because they're purporting to be advocates. When we're saying Black Lives Matter and we're saying, you know, Black lives are valued and they're important and Black voices are important, to then hear, well, all lives matter, it just seems like someone who is, is looking for a distraction or a way to derail the conversation. At first, when I first, when that first became like a, a hashtag, it was like, so you really don't get it. Like, how, how is that your response to me saying Black Lives Matter? Like, no one would ever go to a breast cancer walk and criticize them for talking about breast cancer. You wouldn't walk up to someone who has experienced breast cancer, survived it, or someone who's lost somebody from breast cancer and say, how dare you talk about breast cancer? Why not talk about colon cancer? How dare you exclude other cancers? You would never do that. If your wife asks you, like, am I pretty? And you're like... All people are pretty. <laughs> I think everyone's beautiful. You know, do you love me? I love everyone. <laughs> it's probably not going to go over well in your family, right? Your wife is probably going to have a problem with that because what she wants in that moment is specificity. You know, what's desired in that moment is to be seen in her unique experience with you. And that's what Black people are asking for right now is to be seen and our unique experience in the world to actually be seen and valued. You know, when you look at the systemic racism in this country, historically, Black lives have not mattered. And when I hear all lives matter, what I always want to say and kind of what's really important to me to clarify is that no one's saying that your life doesn't matter. But what we're, what we're saying, and I've seen this protest sign, you know, in the past couple of weeks, all lives can't matter until Black lives matter. I think there are some people out there that just truly don't get that concept at all. They, they're thinking we're trying to be bigger or more important than all life or other lives, and that's just not the case. Black Lives Matter, comma, as well, right? There are definitely people who say it just to, you know, they want to be agitators or whatever, but there are definitely people who just don't understand it. Because before Black Lives Matter, before that movement, no one was saying all lives matter. Like no one felt the need to like position themselves that way. You know, we've got this, this thing about labels, right? And it's like, I would like a world without labels. And I would like a world without labels too. Um, but you actually can't get to a world without labels until you identify all the labels we're ignoring. <laughs> when Black Lives actually matter, then all lives will matter because of the institution that we set up in this country built on the, on the backs of black people and slaves. Like they were property and we're still fighting through those social stigmas that black people are kind of still property. I mean, look at that woman in Central Park. There is an African-American man. I am in Central Park. He is recording me and threatening myself and my dog. I'm sorry, I can't hear you that. I'm being threatened by a man in the ramble. Please send the cops immediately. Like she could just make a comment and be like, I can ruin your life. Like in New York City, in Central Park, this woman voted for Obama. She's a Democrat. Like, and then, like, it's still like inside of us that we are still, as people of color, property that can be like manipulated. So, like, I believe that people need to educate themselves on what Black Lives Matter actually means. It's not just a saying. Like, understand what it means. The same thing happened with Black Power in the 1970s. Power to the people. And all, like, it's the same thing. It's like, oh, you know, it, this is a, this is hate speech. It's like, no, you know. It, it, it's, it's not hate speech. We're, we're talking about equity. We're talking about, we're not talking about su supremacy. We're talking about equity. 
I'm saying I'd like to be on an on equal playing field. I'd like to be given the, the, the uh, equal, equal chances, equal privileges, equal opportunities, a right to live my life safely, a right to get a decent education, a right to have decent food in my face. This is basic stuff because my life matters. My life matters. And if you say, no, all lives matter, what I would say is, I believe that you believe that all lives matter, but because I live the life that I live, I am certain that in this country, not all lives matter. I know for a fact, based on the numbers, my life hasn't mattered, that black women's lives definitely haven't mattered, that black trans people's lives haven't mattered, that black gay people's lives haven't mattered, that we could, we could run the list that immigrants' lives don't matter, uh, that, I mean, we, we could do that their Muslims' lives don't matter, the indigenous people of this country's lives have never mattered, I mean, we could go on and on and on. So when we say all lives, are we talking about white lives? And if so, then let's just say that. Because that, that's, it's coded language. It's coded language. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit more about this. We want to bring in Bryce Michael Wood. You're the host of For Your Discomfort. Bryce, you're in that piece right there. And at the very end of the piece, we saw Jason uh, Reynolds say that all lives matter is coded language. You know, I've seen a lot of different types of people put the hashtag up. And um, it has occurred to me, and it's in the piece, that there are some people that are well aware of the coded language that it is. And some people don't even really, I think, understand the concept of coded language. So we might even want to break that down. And there are other people who just think, well, you know, it, of course all lives matter. All lives matter. They take it at face value and they may not share it, but they actually don't know why they shouldn't share it. So can we just start with the basic building blocks? When we say coded language, people need to understand that the way racism is expressed in this country is often not direct. It's often shrouded. So why is All Lives Matter coded? Um, you know, I think, first off, happy to be here. Um, you know, I think All Lives Matter is coded language because one, it was just reactionary. You know what I mean? Like, the, the phrase didn't exist until black people began to say that black lives matter. All lives matter is just a coded way of silencing the black voice and the black experience, in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I always say, you know, if you're unsure about something that you see on social media, you know, follow that thread back. See who's see who's sharing that information, and then ask yourself if you um, share the same point of view as that person. And you will find when you see all lives matter, you see a lot of other information that maybe um, you might not be comfortable with. Um, so, so you know, the piece really talks about why all lives matter it is not really saying all lives matter. It's 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 saying that black lives matter um, is is not worthy of additional attention, and it explains how. Listen, it's a given that lives matter. But black people in particular have been dealing with certain pressures and risks that other groups have not, and we need to talk about it. All the Black Lives Matter as well, right? Um, I think what is kind of surprising to me is that this isn't a new organization, right? It's about six years old. It started uh, because um, of the Trayvon Martin case. But back then, corporations like Target uh, were not scrambling to uh, align themselves with Black Lives Matter. What's happening now? Why have things changed? <laughs> so back then, social media was not as big, right? Back then, mm. people's voices weren't able to be heard as widely as they are able to be heard now. What's happening now is the fact that, one, we have video, right? We have video proof, and two, people's voices and people's platforms online have grown so big. The influence is so big now. So big com corporations and big companies are feeling pressure. Right? It's, it's something I talk about in For Your Discomfort. I'm, I'm tired of the, the bumper sticker hashtags and, and, the, and the bumper sticker quotes, right? Like, there are companies out here and people that are simply fulfilling a quota, right? They are simply making sure that they, you know, were a part of Black Lives Matter when it counted. They are simply trying to be important <laughs> in the moment to make sure that they are on the, on the right side of history, so to speak. But 
they didn't have to be on the right side of history way back then because it wasn't as loud. Black voices weren't as loud back then as they are now. People aren't okay with how our world is, is, is forming, specifically in America, and companies are starting to hear people, and they are reacting accordingly. Mm -hmm. it's, so, some of it is genuine, but I'm, I'm not sure all of it is. Okay, so let us talk about that, because it's one thing to say Black Lives Matter. It's another thing to act on it. What do you want to see Target, Walmart, Amazon, Facebook do? Um, we've seen, you know, we've seen representatives of those companies um, kind of push back when they receive criticism for, um, for their al aligning themselves with Black Lives Matter, but, you know, sort of pushing back using your marketing department to push back is one thing. What actual change would you like to see? Yeah, so I think, you know, something we spoke on uh, before was this idea of, like, being a non-racist versus anti-racism, right? And the difference being one is mm -hmm. passive and one is active, right? So in this case, marketing, uh, putting a post out there, making sure you have a picture that is quote-unquote diverse, is sort of passive, in my opinion, if you have power, right? Like, an active decision would be to grant access, something Black people have really lacked since they were freed from slavery. You know, we haven't had a lot of access in a lot of areas, and these companies can provide access, can provide financial backing, can do more than simply post and encourage, right? They can do more than simply check a box and be like, okay, you know, made sure I did my Black Lives Matter duty for the day, donated to the charity. But have I actually changed my structure? Have I actually changed the people that are that are in positions of power within the infrastructure of my company? These are the bigger questions, and these are the things that we haven't really seen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, often, too, you may see companies that have maybe a person of color or a black person who's a VP, but they're not in a position that can actually create cultural change within the entire company. So for the, for the company, they can sort of check the box, done, um, but it doesn't necessarily trickle down. At all. At, at all. It's, mm -hmm. it's that, you know, it's the difference between diversity and inclusion. Right now, to, to be diverse is to make sure you have a wide spectrum and, and different types of people working for you, right? So that if somebody walks in, they can go, all right, this this place is pretty diverse. All right, you fulfilled that, that uh, requirement of a company. But inclusion is actually having a real true seat at the table, right? It's actually having your ideas and your decisions and your thoughts be taken seriously and be taken past the table into action, actually having access and affecting real change. And to your point, actually changing a culture of a company. Something something we've talked about on For Your Discomfort a lot is right now, everyone is sort of in like research mode, right? And it's, and it's a lot of like mental stimulation and making sure you post everything and making sure you know the facts and the statistics. But until you change internally as a person, mm -hmm. right, until you change the foundation on which you stand on, then you're not really gonna change overall. It's just like a costume you wear, right? It's just knowledge that you put on that you know now, but you haven't really understood it and felt it. And the same can be said for a culture at a company. Until someone of color in that company is affecting real change and is actually hurt to change the culture, then you may have changed on the outside, but the inside is still operating from a very racist place. Mm -hmm. And I think part of what we're talking about now, just to bring it back to Black Lives Matter, is, you know, for many people, they may only see and hear Black Lives Matter in the wake of some, uh, you know, tragic um, police brutality situation. But in actuality, the organization is, though very vocal and responding to police brutality, is about much more than that. It's about it's a, about a much more holistic approach to taking care of black lives. Um, and I think people don't quite get that, right? Yeah. yeah, people, I think what we're seeing now and what's understood of Black Lives Matter is the hashtag itself. 
are the protests, mm -hmm. are the t-shirts, are the buttons, are the links to police brutality and, and the straight up murder of black lives and the, and the, you know, black lives not being lost, but black lives being taken. And that is when Black Lives Matter's voice has been like loudest, right? That's when we've kind of seen them and been made aware of them. But Black Lives Matter as an organization is doing much more than just screaming loudly from a, you know, from a bullhorn. Right, their their goal is to affect real change. That doesn't mean immediate change. That means real change, right? In in our society and in our culture and in our psychology, mm -hmm. um, and that starts by helping out literally black lives. That starts with positioning black people in positions to affect real change. That starts with educating white people and white allies and or accomplices to be on the same page so that when black lives are actually trying to move forward, there isn't anything hindering us. Mm -hmm. um, so throughout this whole thing, I've heard this over and over again. People say it feels different, feels different, feels different than other times. Um, so. I want to ask you, um, does it feel different? Do you think this is different? Will, once the dust settles, because right now, you know, people are home because of COVID, and so there's an awful lot of talk about race. Um, but once the dust settles, once we go back to the way we were living before, do you think that we will see, will this conversation continue, and will we continue to see changes happen? Uh, I, I would have to say I'm hopeful for that simply yeah. because of the season we're in. You know, COVID-19 has really forced us to sit in this. Uh, a friend of mine was, was talking to me and he said, you know, 2020 comes with 2020 vision, right? We kind of heard that coming into the new year, but it's real. Like the veil has been lifted. Everyone can see clearly now the racism that exists and the racism that has been perpetuated for, for centuries in our country. And what I'm, what makes me hopeful is that people have been forced to sit in this discomfort for a while. We don't have the distractions mm -hmm. that we've normally had. We don't have the, the outlets to sort of distance ourselves from these very real topics, topics and these very real deaths, right? We are not only talking about it, but being forced to sit with our discomfort. And what makes me hopeful, and, and I've talked about it before, is the generations that exist right now in this season there are people that were alive for the civil rights movement and the civil rights marches, right? There are people that have done this before and are watching a new generation do it in a different way. And this, my generation, we're able to, to look to them and look to the past and talk to them and, and get wisdom of how to better do this and how to better approach this. And I think we have much more access than we used to, but we still don't have enough. But I'm hopeful with the access that we do have and the platforms that have been established for and by black people that we're going to see some real change. That There's something different in the air, like you said. And I can't put my finger on it, mm -hmm. but it's, it's very real and it's very in our face and apparent. Well, I hope so, because everyone, black lives and other lives, will benefit from it. Um, Bryce Michael Wood, you're the host of For Your Discomfort. People should check it out. Thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you for having me.